Yo, what is good, YouTube? And welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we are going to be ranking the top 10 best small forwards in NBA 2K24, my team, including gambling cards. So this is a very deep, very good list that unfortunately is almost entirely consistent of gambling cards, quite simply because 2K has not dropped very many non-gambling high-tier small forward options as of late. And there are a lot of really good small forwards who are gambling cards. So it's unfortunate, but this might be one of the weakest spots. This and shooting guard for sure when it comes to non-gambling cards. So the gambling lists are definitely dominated by mostly gambling cards. With that being said, before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 25,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day. Tons of consistent daily my team content. Would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop right into it and let's discuss. So number 10 is going to start off with a non-gambling small forward. One of only two on this list being Peja Stojakovic. Opal Peja is an elite level shooter with a phenomenal release who can shoot the ball at a very high level. Actually solidly athletic as well with an 85 standing and driving dunk. Good finishing badges. Not the greatest playmaker and his SIGs certainly are not the most elite, but as a whole the card is very, very nice and he's actually very good defensively as well as uh, in addition. So I like Peja a lot. I like his release. I think movement wise, he certainly could be a lot better, but I think as a whole, he's actually a pretty good card. And I think number 10 is a very fair spot for him on this list. Number nine, C Webb, Chris Webber really liked this card. I was very impressed with him when I did gameplay with him, but his release could be a little better. That's the one nitpick with this card. Stat and badge wise, he's phenomenal. Even got pretty good playmaking badges, although gold handles for days would be nice on Hoff, although that's something that I think is true about a good amount of cards in this list. Um, I don't know, at the same time, like, C Web's a really good card. He really is. He does a lot of things very well. He's even got good six, tray escape, decent behind the back. Uh, good good all around card. Very, very nice. But I think number nine's fair. Like, I just think this position is really deep, and I think his release could be better. So that's where I'd put him. Number nine, or number eight, sorry, Terry Dishinger. Um, mostly here because of the elite level release and with defensive badges. He's really good defensively, but he does kind of need clamps added, as well as maybe one or two more perimeter defensive badges, if possible. Things like challenger fast feet. Pick dodger certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, but an amazing shooter, very good playmaker, good great great release and an elite level slasher his release is absolutely phenomenal Rudy base Carmelo offers one of the better releases in my team very very good jumper very good card I think yes he's only six seven but I think number eight's a very pretty fair spot and that's it's, it's not a bad spot for him for sure by any means number seven is going to be I just realized I forgot who number seven is because I freaking put him twice um I've put Larry Bird on this list twice, and whoever number seven is, is supposed to not be Larry Bird, but I'm literally forgetting right now. I'm drawing a blank on who it actually is. So number six is Scottie Pippen. I'll tell you that. Um, really, really good card. Scottie Pippen, six, eight with a seven foot wingspan. I'm going to come back to number seven here in just a sec, but Scottie Pippen, hot spots from literally everywhere. Um, his badges are phenomenal. He uh, is really, really complete. Amazing defender, six foot eight. Like I said, with a elite level release as well. The one thing this card does not have is the best playmaking ability in the world. His sigs certainly could be better. Escape isn't great. Behind the back isn't great. Pro two fade is top tier, and his release is top tier. But his sigs could certainly be better, and I think that's the thing that I believe does kind of hold this card back. I'm gonna go through here real quickly and figure out who I had at number seven because I did not write it down. And I gotta figure that out. Um, oh. There it is. Andre Kirilenko is who I had at number seven. AK-47. He is amazing defensively, but, and he's good offensively too. He just doesn't have great sigs and his release could be a little better. You know what I mean? He's actually got pretty good sigs. Uh, Steph Escape, Curry Slide as well, MJ Dribble Style. Release just is not great. Normal Fade is not bad, but not incredible as well. And while he's one of the better defensive cards in the game, and he's actually a pretty good playmaker as well, does not have half handers for days and just as a whole could be better. That's all I'm really saying. I do not think the card is bad by any means. I just think it could be better. And I think it's totally fair to put him here at number, excuse me, at number seven. Number five is going to be Larry Bird. That's where I meant to put Larry. Larry is 6'9 with Trey Escape. Really good movement and a release that I actually do like. His upper could be better, but his base is really good. IQ base speeds up his upper for sure. And it actually is a pretty smooth, pretty easy release. Pro 2 fade, Kyrie dribble style, Trey Escape. Jamal Murray behind the back, I believe, as well. And Steph's drag back. Really good movement. Really good six. Even an elite level defender off move one force or 6'9. Like, this card's really good. He's been out for a while, uh, over a month now, but he's really, really good still. And that's a card I, I, don't, I don't have him personally and haven't used him a ton but i am envious of those people who do have him and have been able to use him a lot because he's really really good paul george is number four to me this card is just amazing as a shot creator a ton of versatility does everything incredibly well six eight with a six eleven wingspan he is the shortest player of anybody left in this list which is one of the things that keeps him i guess a little bit lower but his playmaking ability is as good as any as honestly is the defensive end of the court athletically he's phenomenal he's got a super nice release a great fade really he's an incredible card and i think you could probably make an argument for him higher than even number four
four, but he is better at the shooting guard position. A guy like Luol Deng at number three has very similarly to Paul George, a great release, very good movement, although I would say not quite as good as PG has, and also his playmaking badges. Not quite as complete as PG, but he's an inch taller, still super athletic, still a great shooter, still has a top tier fade with Trey Fade and a really good release, and still has very solid animations with John Wall's drag back, Steph behind the back, all that type of stuff. As a whole, very, very good card, and... Um, I think he's super solid. I think he does a lot of things really well, and I think he is still one of the best small forwards in the game. And I don't know. Paul George, Luol Dang, you could flip those guys. I wouldn't blame you. I think Luol's defensive animations might be a little better as well. John Isaac at 6'10 with his player build and his defensive animations. He is definitely number two to me. Really, really good defensively. Offensively, yes, he's good. He's got a nice release. He's got some, some decent sigs. He's got uh, KD escape, which is an awful as well. Steps behind the back. but uh, And he's actually got a pretty good release as well, plus Trey Fade. But defensively is where he really shines. He's 6'10 with unbelievable defensive badges. Every badge in the game defensively is on off. This card is a stud. Uh, I wish I had him. I don't, but he is absolutely amazing. That's kind of a consistent theme with pretty much this whole list, unfortunately, is I can say this card's amazing. I wish I had him, but I don't. That's literally true about everybody on this list except for Pager, pretty much, uh, and Terry. That's it. Everybody else is unattainable, which is absolutely wild um, without gambling anyway, and that's unfortunate. But Tim Thomas at number one. The thing is, he's basically... Jonathan Isaac, size-wise, on the defensive end of the court, 6'10", great release, but he's got all the playmaking in the world, perfect sigs, cough play, handles for days, still an incredible, incredible, really good, versatile defender, does everything well defensively, still super athletic, but he's got all the perfect sigs and an elite fast release as well. Tim Thomas is definitely the best small forward in the game, and I don't think there's really all that much doubt of that right now, at least when you're talking about the uh, non-100 overalls. Now, to be fair, I do sometimes talk about non-100 overalls, um, or I, I, I don't know if you were to include the hundred overalls, I think a couple of them would probably be on this list. Like KD cracks this list somewhere. Giannis definitely does. And then where does a guy like Kevin Garnett at this point with his release crack this list? I mean, I'm sure he's in the top 10 somewhere, but he's in the lower half. I don't know. hundred overalls aren't particularly attainable though as a whole. So the only way to get them guaranteed is through the collector level, which obviously has been a whole fiasco of its own. Um, and yeah, I think position is super good. It's just really unfortunate that it's as, as, as tainted as it is right now by all gambling cards. So it's the type of thing where it'd be really, really nice if y'all are listening to, okay, give us a six, like a six, nine, six, 10 stud small forward with a really good release in season seven. Cause this is a position of need for sure when it comes to non gambling cards. And it's a position that hasn't been addressed realistically in a while for a while at this point, at least to the truly top tier option. So with that being said, that is where we are going to call it for today's video. So I hope y'all did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon, and I appreciate y'all. Peace.